What's up, Vital MTB? Welcome to the second shootout episode for Let's Go Racing. We've got the Forbidden Dreadnought paired up against the Specialized Enduro. Both these bikes are meant to be Enduro race machines, but they've got completely different design philosophy. We've got Ryan and Connor on both these bikes since I'm still injured, and they'll do three timed runs on one, switch bikes, get three timed runs on the other, and then we'll get their feedback and times uh, after that session. Both these bikes are built up with the same exact build kits, so we're gonna be testing the differences in between the frame themselves instead of the differences in between parts. Today we've got a track that really should push these bikes to the limit. It's steep, rough, and fast, exactly what these bikes were meant to be ridden on, and we'll see how these bikes perform against each other. Let's get into it. This is a real trail, in my opinion. Like, this is what, you need traction to slow down, and you need to be really thoughtful. You can't run wide and uh, and you gotta pick your line. Like an inch matters here. So it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm stoked on it. So for this shootout, we just had Ryan and Connor do six timed runs back to back uh, without any stopping in between. And we didn't show them times after every run either. So here's some raw clips to just give you a sense of the track and how they're riding it. And then we'll dive into feedback and times after this. Yo! All right, we finished up a big day of riding, or well, at least these guys did. I'm excited to kind of go over the times, and these guys haven't seen them yet, so we'll kind of see how the times compared to what they felt. We'll throw the times up for you right now. Basically, it seems like these guys went faster on opposite bikes, which is mm -hmm. super <laughs> interesting. Um, and, you know, I guess this whole series is to figure out what bike is faster, um, but we've got conflicting data on that. So it'll be fun to kind of break that down. Um, Connor, you your times are honestly kind of confusing to me. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the first lap on the Dreadnought was supposed to be like the shakedown lap, and I was a shakedown lap for sure. Just like chill, Yeah. felt the bike, and then the next two were like, all right, let's go. So, and those are super, but, I mean, they're almost the same, 0 0.01 difference. Yeah, the two most consistent laps of the day, Connor put down a 147.95 and a 147.94. And wow. then after your warm-up lap, you dropped 11 seconds <laughs> and then laid down those two runs, which is sick. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> bad. Um, and... Your fastest lap on the Specialized was a 154.42. Yeah, Ryan, your times are kind of interesting as well because you just consistently got faster every run. Like when you switched between the Dreadnought and the Specialized, you ran a really similar time. And then from there, you pretty much continued to drop a second every lap. Yeah, and I think that was like my speculation coming into the whole thing too was that I feel like I have a, a fair level of confidence that, that that's what my trajectory would be, yeah. would be to get faster with every lap. Um, that was kind of an interesting thing to see it actually spin out that way. We did get, get to have some good looks at it, so I felt comfortable when I did lay down the Dreadnought lap, so I did actually feel like I knew where I was going. But I just think that with every passing lap, like I, I knew that I would pick up, okay, a note here and a note there and like clean little mistakes up. So, um, but it's, it's cool to see for sure. Kind of outside of the times for both of you, where were the bikes the most different in like their handling and performance on, on different sections of the track? Where do you think each bike was excelling or maybe uh, struggling a little bit? Uh, totally opposite of what I originally would have thought. Um, in certain like bench cut areas, there's just like big holes. 
I figured the longer dreadnought would uh, kind of cater to that more. Totally opposite. So the dreadnought, I felt cornered better. Uh, whereas the enduro on like the choppy kind of bench cut stuff um, handled that a lot better. You were a lot faster on the dreadnought at the end of the day. Like what was, what do you think translated to that speed? For me, it was like corner confidence, just like going into something, knowing that the bike is just going to like plant and be there. Whereas enduro felt like a little, like it wanted a jackknife at times on, especially like the sh steep right to left. Uh, every time going in that left on the enduro, which is what I rode yesterday and practice on, it was just like, oh, like, here we go. Um, and had a few sketchy moments yesterday. And you were spending a lot of time on the Specialized up until till this. Like, Connor just raced the Georgetown enduro, like, two days ago <laughs> on it. So you are spending all week on the Specialized. So it's interesting coming back to the Dreadnought that you were kind of feeling that confidence. And before I got hurt, I rode both of these bikes as well. And it was interesting riding the Specialized uh, because both these bikes have the same reach. I think one might be a mill off, but it's a different chainstay and obviously the high pivot has a major impact on that as well. Given that those bikes have the same reach, I actually felt that the Enduro felt way smaller. Um, I felt like I was a little cramped on it and I think that's because it kind of requires you to ride a little bit more over the front. Um, and like you were saying, it just felt like you could kind of be centered or kind of lean back in the corners and on the dreadnought. Yeah, yeah, and feel like the bike wasn't like getting away from you yeah. as much. I felt like on the Enduro, um, without having, without pulling myself up kind of and getting more aggressive in the corners, it felt like I was like falling off the back of the bike if I was really pushing through the corner sometimes. And I guess it was just more something to get used to. The corner characteristic of the bikes, especially when you're geeing out into those corners, um, I think was like quite different. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would agree with, you know, kind of the elements you guys are talking about. It's, it's like, and, and I think that the kind of coming back to your original question was like, where did I think the Dreadnought excelled? And I think that the braking performance on the Dreadnought was really good. Um, and I felt like that was what made it cornering confidence a little bit more in some situations because I could get it to slow down. I felt like it would, you know, really drop anchor and, and grab the, the traction to get slowed down to then set up and let it out. And, and then having that little bit more chain stay, when you did let it out, you never felt like you got too far off the back and felt it like squirting out from under you. But at the same time, that's an interesting thing about the Specialized is I noticed that when I switched back to the Enduro, I was like, hit the first left-hander and it's got good support at the end. It's kind of, I didn't think it was that great in the middle. It's kind of tricky rut in the middle. And then it comes into really good support and like I surprised myself a couple of times where I'd be like, whoa, you know, cause it felt like it was shooting yeah, it, out it, it, like, from I, under me yeah. because I was too far back Ooh. and I made that adjustment. Okay, I need to be, you know, square up on it a little bit more. And instead of squatting through that big compression, I started extending my legs through the compression. I feel like the thing that we were talking about a lot through the day that I think is really interesting is like, one's 154 and the other one's a 170 travel bike. Yeah. And like, they're super comparable. And that's kind of what I think is interesting about this test is like, we wouldn't really compare bikes of those two travels like head to head, but feel wise, I think that was what was so interesting is that on that track in theory, the Specialized should be a little faster, a little bit more travel, but feel wise, like I loved the way that the Dreadnought rode. Like I think if I was gonna be lapping it for my own enjoyment, I would ride the Dreadnought. I thought it was so much fun to ride. I thought. It, I thought I had like my most fun laps on that bike. I thought it was really comfortable. I thought, you know, that was killer. So that's why it's kind of funny to come back to it, see times and be like, wow, the, you know. This. You were actually faster on the Specialized. And I didn't feel like any of those runs felt particularly good. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think I was like, I wasn't as comfortable on those runs as I felt on the Dreadnought. Hmm. So yeah. kind of an interesting thing. Totally. Um, you know, well, we were also talking about like the specializes longer travel 
the Enduro's a shorter travel, but they feel the opposite. The Dreadnought feels like a bigger bike. Yeah. The Specialized feels like a more sprightly, energetic bike. Yeah, totally. But the travel numbers wouldn't suggest that. And we kind of like dipped into that in the last episode too, the Instinct versus Druid. Yeah. Like, same sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a similar story to the to the last episode. Um, yeah. Where the Druid, less travel, but feels like a much bigger bike. And the thing I kind of come back to, that platform just seems to mute a lot of the little feedback. It's a less hectic experience. For sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, if for sure, I, I agree. I think it's funny, is like, if I was blind testing, and didn't know anything about either of these bikes, and someone was like, this one's a 170 and that one's a 150, I would have been like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, meaning, you know, that the Specialized was a shorter travel. I would agree with that from feel. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's what I loved about that bike, was like, I would, you know, felt like I was bahaing across the, the bumps, and then when I planted it, it was like, it's oh, it just stuck. felt, it just felt so solid and sure, and like, you know, when everything else is pretty much similar. So, I don't know, it was, it was really interesting. I think that's what's kind of surprising about it. I kind of had a, had a hint that like that might be the case, even though I didn't feel good or feel comfortable mm -hmm. on the Enduro that I was like, well, that could have been fast. And it, it turned out to be, which is super interesting. Final thoughts or <laughs> reflections from the day? The trails are sick. I'm sure Ryan can uh, <laughs> contribute to that. Um, yeah, they're sick. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, the by both bikes did really well. That is my favorite type of riding. Uh, it stirred up a lot of good feelings and, and diving into corners, wondering if you're going to come out of them. I just I loved it. Today was uh, filled my heart, and I'm I'm really grateful to have come out. It was awesome. Yeah, that trail rips uh, for yep. sure. So yeah. Well, thanks Ryan and thanks Connor for uh, carrying the flag for Let's Go Racing. And putting down an awesome test you know it's we have no idea what the times are going to be when we do these and you know we don't really care which one's faster it's just kind of a fun experiment and this is also just like one day on one trail so like i think the times are kind of also just like a tool to back up like what we were feeling and kind of a tool to decipher what the differences are in between these bikes it's we're trying to be as scientific as we can with this, but it's there's so many variables, and at the end of the day, it's a it's a goal, but it's impossible. So <laughs> we're just doing our best. It doesn't mean one is absolutely better than the other, but hopefully, um, our feedback can be valuable to you guys when you're looking at both these bikes. And uh, yeah, hopefully, there's some interesting information to uh, help you out with the buying decision or. Uh, Go ride one. Or stir your interest, yeah. Yeah, go, go ride one. Like, you, you're, you're sitting with that question, what, what's it like? You know, uh, man, both are awesome. And yeah, and yeah I, hope, I hope it gets you in a direction to, you know, push over the ledge, go check one out. Yeah, both awesome bikes. They're, it's hard to find bad bikes these days. I agree again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ride them. Yeah, I think that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode.